All right, so I think we're ready to start assembling this thing. I don't think it's gonna be too much of an issue here. It looks quite straightforward, but let's go ahead and open this instruction manual here. In the beginning, we can see we have, you know, the overall picture of what it should be looking like once we're done. And they label everything and what it's called. So if you're new to 3D printing, this will help you quite a bit to figure out, you know, what each part means when people say certain things, so. All right, so here finally we have step one. So for step one, looks like we need to assemble the frame. So here we have like a picture of what you're gonna be working with, and then they actually have written out instructions of what to do. So it looks like for step one, we're gonna need our main base, which is right here. And we are gonna need our four extrusions here, and they are nicely shrink wrapped. So here they are, and unfortunately they're a little bit oily. So I think I'm gonna need to wipe that down or this oil is gonna get everywhere. Cause if you don't wipe them down and you touch it and then you're gonna, you know, leave fingerprints everywhere and it's just, it's not a good feeling. It doesn't feel as nice when you're putting it together when everything's oily. You can get that oil off of there and you can see how nice that looks without the oil. And we're also gonna need eight M525s, which there's a whole pack of them in this little Ziploc bag. And they also come with washers. So every time you use a bolt, you need to put a little lock washer through it, just like that. So all these channels look the same, except for there is a hole here on one of the sides. And the hole is going to go up. And on the bottom we have, as you can see here, two threaded holes, and you're gonna put two bolts through each one. So the first one here we can put up front. So this might be a little bit difficult because you have to raise it, hold the channel, and then put the uh, bolt under there also. But just like that. So since we're gonna need our tools, let's go ahead and take those out. And that's a little packet here. So it looks like we have a flathead screwdriver, a couple of wrenches, and a set of Allen keys. All right, so now we can use our Allen key to snug this up and that's it. But just run them up, but don't tighten them yet. And the reason for that, because we want our top to go on there nicely before we snug everything down. So basically you're just gonna go around and put all the four channels on each corner, just like that. And just don't forget that the little hole goes to the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll go to the next step. All right, so I got the four sides on. So we can go to the next step, but before we do, and before we build this thing too much, Let's go ahead, flip this thing around here on the side and open this cover so we can see how the electronics are put together there. I have a feeling that this will look very similar to the Ender 3 Pro. So the good part is, is there's only one, two, three, four little bolts to take out and this cover should just pop right off. All right. And it's quite a heavy plate, it's not a thin one. And we do have a fan that's attached to it there. All right, so it looks quite clean overall. Here we have the power supply, it's thin. It still looks like a thin one, but what I'm noticing is that it is not a Meanwell power supply, it's Landy. But I think this is still a higher end power supply that's very similar to the Meanwell. So, so hopefully it's just as good and it has variable fan and it's pretty quiet. And here we can see the board. Hopefully I can get a little closer guys. Hopefully you can see that, but yeah, it looks like just a typical Creality board. I'm not too sure what I'm looking at, but there are some heat sinks here and there and yeah, it looks quite simple and small. So just looking at the electronics here, guys, this is like extremely simple compared to other printers that I review and open up. So, and I wonder if this is kind of the secret sauce of the Creality is that they keep everything very simplistic, but choose their components very precisely to work just right. So I don't know. They definitely got the quality part figured out and how to get these printers to, get, to produce nice prints. On the power supply here on the top, it's kind of hard to see, but right here, there's a switch, there's a hole and there's a switch and it is on two, 230 volts. So we'll, we'll need to switch that this way to 120, but you can see through it really easily. So go ahead and switch that so you don't have any kind of issues when you try to power this thing on later. And if you don't do it right away, you sometimes end up forgetting doing that because once you get so close to completing it, you just want to power it on and print. So, all right, so let's put this cover back on and uh, we'll proceed to step two. All right, so part two looks like we're going to install the main top part of the printer, the assembly. All right, hopefully you guys can see that, but we're just gonna set the top assembly part right on top of these channels here, just like that. And so it looks like we have one, two, three, four bolts that go through here through the top, but also it looks like we have a few bolts that will go through the side here also. So yeah, so we're just gonna simply take our bolts and then move this channel all the way to the end and then start the bolts. 
exactly the same thing for each corner here and the reason I haven't tightened anything yet is because we want everything to kind of align together we don't want anything to be forced so now we have step three which is the Z axis assembly the bed that goes in the back there and that should be quite simple so the motor goes to the front like that and it just kind of sits just like that so basically you got four bolts total you got one two and then three, four on each end there. Mine has an issue, believe it or not. So if you look at the bottom over here, we can see our my frame and we can see the wallowed out holes for the bolt to go through. But if we go to the top here, we have the same frame, but it's on backwards. The holes are not wallowed out right there. The wallowed out part is on the wrong end. So whoever pre-assembled this thing, put this frame on backwards. So now what I gotta do is I gotta unscrew these and release that and flip it around. Basically flip this channel around completely and the other way. Or these wallowed out holes are facing the other way. So I guess these things kinda happen so it's not technically a big deal because it's fixable obviously. In any case, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around and then we'll continue bolting it to the frame. All right guys, so I flipped it back around and now we're good to install in it. So this is where it needs to be now. So now I can put my bolts through here and they can go all the way through. And I know you guys can't see very well, but there's two more down here, right there, and then one over here. So now that we're putting our last piece of the frame on, we can start tightening. But before you start tightening everything, what you want to make sure is that you're sitting on a very flat table. So if for some reason you're not on a flat table, you might want to take this whole thing and put it on a flat table, make sure it's sitting flat, and then go around and tighten everything. So I would start with this thing, tighten this, and then the top, and then end with the bottom. Just tighten everything up very snugly. Maybe even check all the corners here, the corner brackets. Basically go over all the bolts. And the reason you want that is because you want everything to be very square and very solid. So as I was tightening everything up, I realized that I missed a pretty crucial step. So you're gonna have a bolt on top and then a bolt through the side here, just like that. So and this is all the way around. You're going to need to put the same bolts that we've been using the whole time on all four corners on the edges and then on tops. So as you're tightening that all up, you know, make sure you put these bolts on in also. All right. So once you snug all that up and everything feels super solid and all your bolts are nice and tight, we can go to the next step, which is the bed. So we basically need to mount the bed on the frame part over here. So, and this is quite a simple procedure. We got one, two, three, four holes there and those four holes over here. And there's a baggie of these bolts that we're gonna need, which are M410. And they do come with little washers. So hopefully you can see it there a little better like this. So I'm just gonna set the plate on here. Sometimes it's a little hard to figure out what angle to film at. But yeah, you can see there's one, two, three, four. And it's actually quite simple and we're just going to go ahead and tighten those up really good. All right, so our bed is on now and our whole assembly can move around. So for the next part, we're going to put all of our accessories on here. So we got the screen, the extruder motor and the spool holder. And this is the locations that they go in here. So the front of the printer obviously is here and we have the power switch here up front. So naturally our display here will go on this side. And this is actually the side that's missing the little end cap here. So the display has two T-nuts here in the back. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna align them in the rail. All right, so now that our display is on, we can go ahead and move to the extruder, which also uses T-nuts and goes right here somewhere. So you're gonna put it in with the coupler up, obviously. So I'm not sure exactly how high or how low it needs to be, but we'll just leave it there for now. We can always adjust it later. And so as simple as that, our extruder motor is on. And so for the last part, we need to put in the spool holder and the spool holder goes somewhere down here. So I guess it needs to be high up enough to, you know, not touch the bottom there. All right. So all of our parts are on and the next part is just connecting all the wires. So this might seem a little intimidating, but Creality does a great job of labeling all the wiring and it's not terribly hard. So let's just go one by one here. So there is quite a bit of wires coming out the bottom here. So let's just leave the hot end wiring away for now. So these longer ones, they all want to go up or go somewhere. And at the end of each one, you can see like this one is labeled E and it's a larger one. So that means it's a extruder motor and our extruder motor is right here. So we can just go ahead and plug that in. So here we have one that says Z. 
and there's a larger one and a smaller one. The smaller one goes to the switch and the larger one goes to the motor. So the Z motor is down here. You're just gonna plug right there and then you're gonna run the switch up somewhere up here all the way to this switch right here. So you definitely wanna be mindful of where you put these wires and maybe even manage them a little bit here and there. Uh, for now, we're just gonna plug everything in and then we're gonna kinda figure out where everything should go. So here we have the X. So the X motor is right here and we'll simply just plug that in. And then our X switch is right on top of here, on top of this uh, channel here. Sorry for the bad camera angles. And the switch will just go right there. And here we have the Y axis. So the Y switch is right here in this corner. So the switch is right here and the motor is right here. So we plugged in the Y motor and the Y switch up here. So now all of our motors are connected. So now we're gonna take our hot end wires here. And before we continue, we can go ahead and put this PTFE tube in here. But before we can do that, this little coupler here is completely loose. So we're gonna have to tighten that up. So we're gonna grab the provided wrench and we're just gonna snug it up. You don't wanna go too tight because this is plastic. So, so and then we're just gonna insert our tube in there and that's it. So from the hot end, there the cables are all not labeled. But the way you know what goes where is just color coding. So if you look in the pack of wires here, if you have a double wire that's white, here you have a double wire that's white. So that is the nozzle thermostat. So we're just going to plug into that. So here we have a double red wire. A double red wire over here says nozzle heater. So we're just going to plug into that. And then we have a yellow and blue wire and that over here is the fan 2. And then here we have a black and red wire and that is the fan 1. And believe it or not guys we're almost done. So for the last two wires we have the bed. So we have the heater and the thermostat. So the thermostat will go in here and it does say bed thermostat. And for the heat heating element we have this large plug that goes together like that. And that's it we're done. As intimidating as it looks with all this wiring it's quite straightforward and simple. So but it looks like we're going to need to do a little bit of wire management here because you know we just have a bunch of wires laying around and it would be nice if we can tuck them in some work and just kind of clean up the overall look and uh, get everything out of the way so you know no moving parts are touching wires but there is one more thing that we haven't plugged in and that is the screen and so the cable for the screen just comes out the side and it plugs in to the very end one right here so if you plug into these i don't think anything will work because i've done that before on the inner three and i'm pretty sure that it is this one on the edge here and that's it and we're done plugging everything in so this is pretty much the extent of everything that we have to do from now on we pretty much can go ahead and tune the printer and make sure everything is aligning and things like that all right so i went through the printer and i kind of buttoned everything up checked everything make sure everything was good so here i kind of ran my wiring in the pack down zip tight it here and there to make it look a little better but one of the things that you probably want to check is these rollers so I didn't have to do anything to mine because they're already actually quite good. Because there's four of them in a box like this, even if they're very loose, that still makes a very good contact because we have a box here and a box here with a rigid beam in between. So, you know, if I tried to flex this side to side, it just won't do it. So my recommendation would be keep these rollers extremely loose. And when I say extreme loose, I mean barely, just barely touching. So also as I was going through everything, I noticed on the bed here, how we put in the four bolts here, I noticed that there was two more holes that we could put a bolt in and we had extra bolts. So I went ahead and put those in. So we got a total of six now. So you could do that if you wanted to. And also I went ahead and zip tied the wiring from the bed to the frame here. So we're not flexing back and forth on the solder connection there. In any case, what you want to do is just kind of go through everything, every, make sure all the belts are nice and tight and everything aligns and all your pulleys ride right. But let's take a minute and look at how this put together and built and how it works. So here on the top, we can see that we have our main movements here. We have the Y axis and then we have the X axis. And so at first, when you look at this thing, you think, whoa, what is going on? Maybe it's something interestingly special, Core X, Y style, whatever, but it is definitely none of that. It's just a regular X and Y positions. It's just the way to think of it. The Y just has two belts and they both connect with this rod here. And in the middle, we have the motor. So the motor just moves the Y on each end. Kind of like a dual Z axis that goes up and down. This is basically what that is. It's a dual belt Y axis. But in any case, so it, this is quite simple. So we have the Y motor there. We have the X motor right here. And there's a belt. And, you know, this runs off of that. So once you look at it, it's everything is quite familiar. It's just all flipped around and 
different ways. So we have the X axis switch here, and then the Y axis switch is right here, and here's our Z axis switch. So in this printer, everything happens on the top, and everything below that, it's just volume of print. So let's take a look at this hot end assembly. So it looks like they already included a little clip here, which is kind of nice, to hold the tube in better. And it appears to be the exact same hot end that Ender 3 Pro has, and a bunch of other Creality printers have. So if we look underneath, we can see that it looks like there is a silicone sock there, which is a nice little upgrade. And that's pretty much it. Everything else looks bone stock, Creality hot end style. And so here we have the bed, and the bed rides up and down. So it's stationary, it doesn't move. But here we can see that it rides on those two rods there, and then you've got a Z screw there that pushes it up and down, and the motor is down there. So it's a very simple design, but the only thing I kind of don't like about this design is that, you know, we have like a really huge plane, and so if you go all the way to this end here and you push down, you can see it flex quite easily. Even though this metal part here is quite thick, you know, you're still going to get some flex of, because of leverage. That's the only thing, but other than that, it's, it's a great solid design. So we do have this magnetic mat, which is quite nice. Pulling off big prints would be very easy off this thing. And we do still keep the huge knobs here for adjusting the bed, which is very nice. And there you can see we have some kind of bushing here with a spring. And I think this thing helps it lock or at least put some tension where it doesn't just fall. So there is nothing holding in this thing because if I just barely touch it, it's already gone down. So it goes down quite easy. So as we go to the bottom here, we can see that we have a little Ender 5 there, installation instructions. So they actually have a little quick guide here, if you didn't want to look at the manual, of how to put it together. These are all the pieces, and then the steps. One, two, three, four, five. And as you can see, it's a cool, very simple build overall. And there we have kind of like some specs there of the printer. And one of the things that I had mentioned correctly was the 220 by 220 by 300 is that the Ender 3 Pro is not 300, it's 250. So. So this thing can print a little bit more, 50 millimeters more on the Z axis. So if we go down over here, we, in the front here, we can see that there's a power switch. So it's just a regular toggle switch. And on the right side, we have the micro SD port there and the USB port. And so Creality is still sticking to their old school screen here and not going to touch screen yet. But their system is quite e simple to use and it seems to work just fine. And it seems like we all keep forgiving them for this because we get such a great value of print quality for the price. So yeah, that's pretty much the uh, whole printer here. We do have the power plug here in the back. That's where our cable will plug in. So this whole printer is honestly a little bit bulky. Especially if you compare it to the Ender 3, which, you know, we literally have almost, I would say probably twice the size of the area that it will take up. So it's quite a large footprint that it needs. 